Hi, I'm Andrew Rudd. I am a filmmaker who screened a film at Salute Your Shorts three years ago. And so I got invited back to be the audience for all these great short films uh, this year. Uh, unfortunately, filmmakers love being with a live audience and hearing what the audience has to say back to them. So it's my job to be the proxy for all the people who aren't in one single room and try to ask these questions. And I'm delighted to get to talk to Brian Laws, who whose film Lost Kings is hopefully one that you've seen. If you're watching right now and you haven't seen the film, go see the film because it's great. Um, I, I was so involved with the main character's quest right up till the very final moments. So, um, so thanks, Brian, for making such a great film. Of course, it was, it was an honor to be a part. Um, I have a bunch of different questions about the film. The first question, which is the least important question is, I did not know that macaroni and cheese had an expiration date. <laughs> yeah, you're, well, you know, it, if you listen closely, it's supposed to sound a little more empty than expired, but yeah, it probably that's, doesn't I, in I'm, reality. <laughs> that's really not a question that I had. Um, I, it was kind of like a fine grain question that developed. Yeah, I know it was funny. My 19 year old son does not believe that anything has an expiration date. So, <laughs> um, so, so I'm curious about oh, where this, I know I've kind of like looked around on the internet. I know that this project is connected. This short film is connected mm -hmm. to a larger project. And I'm yeah. interested in hearing about that sometime, but I don't think this film needs to be connected to be a larger pro to a larger project to work. I think it's extremely compelling. Um, Thank can you. you. Talk a little bit about uh, where it came from for you. Where did this work? Well, I'll briefly touch on what we just talked about. It started with a feature script, which I, I wrote first, um, and so that that was there was inspiration before the feature. Um, but after I wrote the feature idea, um, I, I knew writing a short short concept and making that would be a really great way to uh, find momentum around the feature concept. But even before the feature was written, um, j just as a filmmaker in general, I'm, I'm really interested in stories that um, look at maybe morally ambiguous situations, uh, stories that uh, introduce the audience to a character that maybe they have preconceived notions about. Uh, in this situation, someone who comes from a financially desperate position um, or someone who's choosing to steal uh, I love to have stories that explore looking at um, characters in a way that create a lot of empathy and understanding uh, why someone would come from a certain situation and act in a certain way, uh, especially people groups that uh, typically maybe get reduced to a, a very black and white understanding. So, um, you know, obviously just general life has introduced me to people who come from hard situations, um, I have friends that have been there, um, situations in my own life. So. Um, the story is a, a weird amalgamation of all those different experiences, um, a desire to tell the larger story, um, and to, to really talk about a topic that I think is pretty relevant and important in our country and, and world, which is just the distribution of wealth gap and, and how, how to interact with people that come from um, different uh, economic situations, uh, socioeconomic, socioeconomic situations than yourself. Um, so all those things kind of in a swirl led me to this project. Yeah. Profoundly said. Uh, oh, well, thank you. So I have a little theory, um, and, and, and maybe I've heard it somewhere else, and I'm just curious if you've heard about this or if you're conscious about it. But one of the things that um, I, I tell my, so I'm a teacher too. So one of the things I tell my okay. students is that, um, if, if at the very beginning of any film that you make, you kind of show mm -hmm. your main character just doing something, and I always mm -hmm. say something like, it can be something as easy as making cookies mm -hmm. um, in the oven, but you just show, you don't talk about it, you just sort of let them do their thing, then mm -hmm. that is itself gonna kind of bond you to the character, the audience, the character. And I mean, I guess Save the Cat, that principle is like, yeah. it's like, overstated and save the cat because you know saving the cat that's like a morally like up sure yeah yeah whereas trying to make some macaroni for your little brother is is just not like a, a commendable thing like i mean it's a low very low level commendable yeah. thing i'm just wondering how like intentionally because our the main character you invite us to be on a journey with ends up you know being in a situation where there are a lot of morally ambiguous things that he's doing yeah. but i just didn't care at all and i was profoundly aware of that every minute that I was rooting for someone who was doing something that I didn't want him to do. 
but I, like, yeah. I wholeheartedly with him. Um, as you designed at the beginning, like, were you thinking about how do I get my audience on the side of him? Or was that like, I, I noticed in your camera is open to an over the shoulder shot. Like mm -hmm. how, how much did these various choices figure into the decisions that you made about how to structure the story, both visually and narratively? Oh, it was absolutely something I was thinking about. Um, you know, it, I, I wasn't thinking as much about needing to see him do something maybe uh, like Save the Cat would say, right. um, uh, what's the term they use? Not admirable, but something yeah. kind of doing them something maybe uh, heroic or something. Yeah. I was more interested in uh, making sure the audience knew kind of what was at stake for him if he didn't succeed and what he was going to go after. Nice. Um, coupled with the fact that, I mean, as I've, as I've gotten more and more into filmmaking, I've recognized that anything I can show and not tell is going to be stronger. Um, I think it's going to be easier, actually, like you said, for the audience to emotionally bond, um, which watching other short films that have done that really well have inspired me a lot. Uh, and I started to become really aware of like, um, there's a, a short film called Sing that won the Oscar for live action short a couple years back. Um, that you could go, uh, watching a lot of those, those films that make it to that level of um, success, I noticed that usually without words, you could figure out what your main character wanted or needed in the opening um, pretty quickly. And if that wasn't established in the first, let's say 30 to 45 seconds, uh, most times the film really lost a lot of the emotional uh, bandwidth it could have. And so in designing mine, it was really important for me to make sure visually you knew why he needed what he needed and, and set it up to where you would have no problem rooting for him. Because I was pretty aware if, if I didn't do that in the first minute, you probably, all audience members are gonna have a lot of trouble rooting for him, which is gonna make it less tense because you're gonna be, you know, confused where you stand in the first place. So. Um, there's an immense amount of thought that went into that. Um, I appreciate you noticing that. Um, and, and I think I succeeded in what I was trying to do. Um, mm -hmm. it sounds like it worked for you. So it definitely worked for me. I don't know what's going on in my head. Um, Pixar shorts. Uh, another thing right. I constantly feel like do that really, really well. Also was kind of a model for me trying to do that well. Mm -hmm. And I do also credit your actor. I mean, I thought he was like, his oh, performance is so compelling. I mean, he was incredible. I, I don't know how old he is, but, um, but it was a great like kid performance. He's not really a kid. He's kind of an adolescent. He's but. 13 or 14, but man, he just blew me away. Like in the audition, he was incredible. Um, my casting director uh, had, had spoken really highly of him. And then on set, it was even more impressive just to watch his natural instincts, uh, how to interact with the camera, some of the work he'd already done about um, just in the mind of the character, little nuances he was adding to things. Uh, he was He was incredible. So... It absolutely wouldn't have worked without him. He was so good. And I did. I don't remember. I did re watch your credits, but I don't remember it, who. If your editor, if you're the editor, if there was another editor involved, I actually edited it. Yeah. Okay. Well, then kudos to because the especially well, that final sequence where our our tension and suspense is just yeah. ultimate. I mean, like you sort of knit together. Um, the layout of this place where he's moving through so kind of beautifully like it like it's a strong like action well, thank, film you. Yeah, thank you thank you domestic setting um, it was important to me because I knew if geography wasn't clear also it would kind of just lose momentum so that you know I have to credit my DP and um, just the whole team in general really working to be mindful of that that you know we're constantly trying to evaluate do you, do you understand where you're at in the house even though you're not in the house actually here. Right. Um, so I'm glad that worked for you, but. It did, for sure. I mean, yes, it did, for sure, 100%. Good. Uh, so so I, I, made a, I made a short um, where a character does some morally ambiguous things. I, I, I too mm -hmm. have drawn to those kinds of um, situations, oh, scenarios. And, and one of the things I thought was really interesting as, as I showed it to audiences is that people became really divided about some of the choices and moments in the film uh, and and in a way that made me happy because they're you know like I, I literally had a, a grandma in an audience once yelling Jerry don't do that <laughs> it's movie <laughs> but yeah that's, um, I mean she's paying attention yeah it's great I, I'm wondering like have you have you gotten feedback from the audiences about like the moments that are especially difficult for them to watch mm -hmm. um, um you know I because of COVID and a lot of this year, typically I would watch it in a lot more rooms with people. Right. Um, 
but in in the small experiences I've had or talking to people that have watched it, uh, commonly people are like, I, I couldn't breathe. I was holding my breath. Um, and they're just, they feel this, this incredible angst watching the whole film. Um, I, it's interesting. I, the last film I did was, uh, seemed to, it was, it was a different tone, a lot more playful, but seemed to elicit a lot of like verbal reactions from the audience, which is really fun. Gasps and yelling and laughing. Um, this one actually seems to, to do the opposite where people really hush down and get really quiet. And yeah. I think a lot of that is because my film in general is really quiet. Um, there's a lot of atmosphere. There's a lot of sound design to make it feel like you're like, there's, there's a lot of things to make you aware of the, the urgency of getting out and, and feel like the action around him. Uh, even as subtle as like dogs barking and moments to, to kind of make you feel nervous. Like if you were sneaking around and you, how you jump. Um, but it's still overall a really quiet film. And so I think the general vibe I've gotten from people who watch it is they get really quiet, really anxious, hold the breath. And at the end, they kind of like feel relieved, but the ending also elicits some different emotions too. So um, that's kind of been the feedback I've gotten so far. Yeah, I mean, like you sort of don't let the viewer completely off the hook uh, at, at any point. <laughs> you know, even after the, yeah. the biggest question of tension is being res has been resolved for us. Yeah we still like, and I love the choices that you made after that point, the kind of the third act choices. Um, Thank you. Because they still give us a, a clear sense of kind of your moral tone that you want to imbue the film with, um, but they're mm -hmm. still pretty ambiguous. Um, they, don't, they don't let us, yeah. they don't let us feel a simple way. We just have a lot of feelings. Yeah, and I, I feel like that was so important because I, I felt like if I swooped in in a 16 minute short film and tried to give you very, very clear answers to a problem mm -hmm. situation that's so complex, mm -hmm. it, it, um, I, I think I would struggle with feeling like I could do that with sincerity because I don't think the situation of how to interact with di people of different socioeconomic positions and how, how to approach that in our country, in our world, I, I don't think it is simple. So mm -hmm. I think it was important to me that the, the, air, the narrative art also left room for that complexity of I don't know what to do with this except there's obviously a message of looking at people in their humanity you know more than other factors first but um but yeah that was kind of intentional the complexity right so in the average audience uh there's mm -hmm. always somebody who asks questions that are very technically oriented I'm not mm -hmm. as technically oriented, but I did really kind of like, I just loved, I, I had an emotional surge in response to a technical achievement. And that achievement was specifically um, that, that shot after he leaves the place, wherever he leaves. Um, and mm -hmm. and, the, and the, the way that you manage the focal length in terms of his movement, because he's moving, he's really yeah. moving. And like, yeah. like we don't get, sort of solid folk. I mean, it reminded me a little bit of uh, Kiristami's Close Up. I don't know if you're familiar with that film. I don't know if I am. If you're not, you put it, put it on your list. Cause okay, like, I'll, play, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. Your ending rhymes visually with his ending. And it's one of the, okay. great, it's one of the great moments of cinema. You, you have to check it out. Oh, I'd um, love to, okay. But yours is completely different and, and mm -hmm. truly wonderful. I'm, I'm wondering how you achieved it. Um, like mm -hmm. congratulations to your focus puller. Um, <laughs> Thanks. But, but tell me a little bit about the like designing those bike riding sequences and that sequence specifically. Yeah, you know, I was that was probably one of the, the things I was most nervous about because there's some general safety concerns, but also there's it's it's a tre tremendous performance to ask of someone at any age, much less someone who's 13 or 14. When I wrote it into the script, I was I, it felt like the part of my script I was the most nervous about pulling off for all those reasons. Uh, it's technically kind of stunt like, um, uh, it requires incredible emotional control, but also restraint from the actor. Um, and like you said, just technically with the camera work. Um, so we, that looks like, um, pretty, pretty how, how you'd approach an independent film. You know, there's our DP, um, was harnessed into the back of a truck. Mm -hmm. um for safety we felt good about all that and then 
Uh, I think Gaffer uh, was with him maybe just to kind of support, but was not in a position that was dangerous. So he was just kind of a little farther back. And the focus puller was there as well. So those three were working in tandem to, to technically get it. Um, the performance was really hard with, with the lead actor. He was really frustrated with himself because he, he didn't feel like he quite got it right. <clears throat> and what we ended up doing is um, we, we had, uh, I, think we, I think we ended up shooting on a 75 millimeter. Um, and originally we shot on a 50 a couple times and there was some nice movement to that. But we kept shooting, we shot a couple takes. The actor wasn't quite, Dash wasn't quite feeling like he nailed it. Uh, our camera didn't quite feel as emotionally involved as we wanted it to be. So we put on the 75. Mm -hmm. And so what that did was uh, it made our movement a little bit more rough. Um, but it also brought us a lot closer into his face. Um, it, it kind of puts you right in his head with the same feelings he was feeling of like riding the bike really fast. Um, and also it made that a more dramatic kind of whip when, when we're driving first pointing backwards at the truck, filming him, and then he catches up to us. Um, which is the guy drive our key grip, key grip driving the truck. Um, uh, it just kind of all came together, finally clicked in that final shot. There was no other shot. I don't think that was even close to that one. That was just the one that we got that was going to work. Um, and even at the end of it, I feel like Dash wasn't quite sure he got the performance right. Um, in the audition, he was able to generate a little more tears. Um, he, he still did a f phenomenal job. I, but 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 I understand it's hard for him to see that because I'm watching the monitor. He's not able to see that. Right. And then my director of photography was a little disappointed that he uh, panned the camera down instead of holding the take still. But it kind of uh, cre it adds to the whole moment in a way, almost like the camera itself has to look away for a moment. Right. Um, so it was one of those filmmaking moments where a lot of factors had to work and there was one time it did and there was even some happy, happy accidents that maybe weren't perfect in the eyes of the individual people there right but as a whole it was perfect so um i that's I've, kind I've, of how it happened great in, mean, in the it, sunlight was like going down and we had to be done so i mean, it was the last thing of the day so it was one of those shots you're like oh my gosh i'm so glad it's now or never <laughs> yeah because if we didn't get it could have tried for another day but if we couldn't really if we couldn't get it i think um but, I don't know if it's an exaggeration, but maybe, maybe the whole film would really hinged on that moment. And it was, it was kind of a high intensity to get that done. So it was a little stressful, but we're glad it worked out. I thought it really worked well. So congratulations. Thanks. Um, so I, I am curious about the title. Um, mm -hmm. Talk about that at all? Like Sure. So the, um, the title actually has a lot more to do with the feature. Okay. Uh, just kind of... It, yeah, exploring different um, films that have gone from a short a short concept to a longer feature concept. Um, just purely for marketing sake, I seem to seem to be successful if you could carry that same title over. Right. So having written the feature first, wrote that title, um, and then when it got adapted down to a short, there's a lot of elements that are removed and, and things that um, would make more sense in the feature with that title uh, that don't quite uh maybe aren't as apparent here now but i kept for the sake of moving back to that feature length uh just for oh that's the film i already saw i saw the short version of that um but the title in the feature um essentially uh is 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 nodding to um the point in the life of all these characters in the feature it's a group of friends where they start to kind of where they go through a loss of innocence where they realize maybe some of the things they thought they were entitled to in the world or some of the things that would, would, would come in life um, aren't coming or aren't going to happen. And, and kind of like that point where you start to get old enough where you realize like um, there are real constraints in life and where I come from and, and some of the situations in my home limit where I can go and what I can be in the world. Um, and kind of a feeling of leaving that childhood um, I think there's a, there's, I know there's a line in the feature, something along the lines of um, feeling like we were kings when we were kids, ran around everywhere, did whatever we wanted, felt like the world was ours. Um, and, and as they enter this adolescent period, kind of feeling lost and not sure how to grapple with um, what their existence is in the world because of where they came from and, and their socioeconomic, socioeconomic struggles, um, how to grapple with that, that it, they're, they're not kings of the world. They don't, 
everything doesn't come easily for them. There's, there's real hard things they have to work through. And um, so that's, it's a, it's a long answer, but um, that's the general thought behind it. There's a couple conversations with characters that uh, group together to make that kind of make sense. I, I'm always, I'm never really a fan of like writing the title and a line of dialogue in the movie. I like it. They kind of like, you have to watch the movie to get the whole kind of flavor to say, ah, that makes sense. Yep. Um, does that explain it a little bit better for you? Totally. I, I mean, I okay. sort of wondered Great. if that might be the case. And yeah. my, my next question was going to be, do you want to tell us a little bit about the feature project? And now you have sure. us a little bit about it, but if you want to say more yeah. about it, um, I know that this might be an opportunity for you to draw more fans toward your work. In yeah, future. I would love to. So, so we've, what we're doing is we're doing this, we've done the short film um, to, to show a little bit of the world, um, show that we have the ability to execute an idea well. Um, so we've set up, we have lostkingsmovie.com is, is where we're kind of building an email list and that's been growing for a little while through past films uh, and what we'll use to kind of move forward with, with the feature endeavor. But and the feature is essentially about a group of friends. Uh, this is just one of the boys who, or who you'd understand to be the main, the main lead in the feature. And a couple friends and uh, coming from struggling homes uh, with different situations. Uh, and they go through a series of break-ins and, and wealthier homes and, and nearby neighborhood, uh, slowly siphoning off valuables, using it to pawn off for money for their families. Um, and over time, it just escalates and get, causes them to get into more trouble and put the families in danger that they were actually setting out to help. Um, so I've called it um, a coming-of-age uh, thriller um, to a degree. Um, I know thriller sometimes promises, you know, super tense stakes it probably would be about as much as what you've seen in mine so far but that is the the general pitch for it um there's a lot more layers to it but that that's kind of the elevator pitch that's great um and 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 understanding for those of you who are watching this interview you know because you just watched the same film that i watched how that does count as a thriller i mean like I, there's no question that like that's where my heart was. I, w I was in the yeah. emotional space that I'm in, you know, when I watched Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible for the first time. Um, oh, that's a huge honor, thanks. <laughs> well, I think that your film is actually more important than Mission Impossible, but it was really fun. Thank you. Um, Mission Impossible was. Uh, I don't mean to demean his work. And I do want to then say again, I heard you say that going to lostkings.com, lost Kings. Uh, lostkingsmovie.com. There we go. Lostkingsmovie.com. I've already been there and signed up to be on oh, your mailing list. Great. And I always like to tell people um, who are watching, hey, you need to be a fan of this future filmmaker. Are there any other places where people should be following your work or watching for the stuff that you're making? Um, Instagram is, is where I try to keep a lot of content coming out, just what's going on and what I'm working on. And that's just my first and last name, Brian, B-R-I-A-N. Last name is Laws, L-A-W-E-X. And um, that's where you can find me. And that's where I'm going to have content up about the film. Um, yeah, those are probably some of the best places. From there, you can probably find me anywhere else. Great. Well, thank you so much for talking to me, Brian. Thank you for making this movie. Um, like I said, I'm a fan. I'm going to be following uh, this thank project you. as it moves forward. And I hope that, um, uh, that you get an opportunity to tell the longer story because um, you're a great storyteller and you, you care about the world in a good way. So that's a well, good Well, thank story. you. It's it's been a huge honor to talk to you and thank you for all your kind words. Uh, we're really excited to share the film and be a part. So we, thank you. Yeah, I hope you can enjoy Salute Your Shorts Festival and get to interact with people a little bit virtually at least and good luck on the rest of the festival run too. Thank you so much. Awesome.